Welcome. Let's take a look at the top story that we are tracking for you. A crucial day for the future course of U.S. Republicans unfolded today. After House members of the GOP opted not to punish newcomer and belligerent conspiracy theorist Marjorie Taylor Greene and Representative Liz Cheney, who was among nine other House Republicans who had voted to impeach Donald Trump on the 13th of January. Now, 46-year-old Marjorie Taylor Greene has long been a vocal proponent of QAnon and other outlandish conspiracy theories, some of which include support for violence against Democrats. That a Jewish-owned financial firm may have been involved in a plot to spark California wildfires using a space laser, even dabbling in denial of many of the deadly school shootings in the U.S. Now, Representative Green also happens to draw bipartisan condemnation. Democrats, however, said that they would proceed to expel Green from the Education and Budget Committees, two of her most high-profile assignments. The measure requires a simple majority to pass. The House Speaker, Nancy Pelosi, has lashed out at the Republican Party for not punishing Marjorie Taylor Greene. Even she pointed out that the party had removed Representative uh, Steve King from the committee assignments in 2019 for racist remarks. Today, the House will vote to remove Representative Green from her seat on education and labor and the budget committees. It's just so unfortunate. You would think that the Republican leadership in the Congress would have some sense of responsibility to this institution, as they did when they did not see Representative King of Iowa uh, two years ago. For some reason... They have chosen not to go down that path, even though we gave Mr. Hoyer gave the leader uh, McCarthy sufficient notice that this was a path we would follow. However, by a vote of 145 to 61, Republicans chose not to strip Representative Liv Cheney of her position. Republicans also decided not to take action against Green. Republicans in the room said that Green apologized for those comments and received a standing ovation from some members. All those um, comments that were brought up, um, everybody, and she came to the she came inside our conference and denounced them as well. She said she was wrong. She has reached out in other ways and forms, and nothing that she said has been based upon since she's been a member of Congress. The showdown has demonstrated the precarious position that the Republicans find themselves in today. Like Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, who has gone as far as to refer to Green as a, quote, cancer, a system of the uh, symptom of the Donald Trump era, while uh, to many others, Green re represents a martyr. Democrats, all in all, are choosing to dish it out publicly, even if some within the majority party are uneasy about the precedent. We are being joined by our correspondent, Susan Tehrani, from New York. For more on this story, hi to you, Susan. It's good to speak to you. Now, the House members of the GOP have opted not to punish either Marjorie Taylor Greene or Liz Cheney, but uh, the Democrats are going to take action, for example, removing Greene from her two most important posts. Now, this showdown, of course, is highlighting the precarious position that the Republicans are in today. Yeah, Allison, it certainly does, considering the fact that the Republican Party has been trying to stitch together its fractured situation and party since the defeat of Donald Trump. There are two camps right now, the Trump loyalists, that some might like to call it, and then the uh, established Republican club, so, so to say on the other hand but uh, I think it's telling that how the Democrats want to proceed with this uh, is maybe a cause of concern for the Democrats themselves as well considering the fact that first of all Marjorie Greene made these comments completely cuckoo everyone agrees with that uh, before she was a member of Congress she's a freshman member now uh, allegedly she's already apologized and said she should be more careful with her comments but to override her responsibilities will be to eventually and ultimately a, a signal to override the American voters in her constituency who came out and voted for her uh, as their representative in Congress and undermining one of the biggest institutions that the Democrats have been defending all throughout the Trump presidency. 
So that's one aspect of it. The second aspect of it is it puts Republicans in a very tricky situation as well. On the one hand, if they do defend Marjorie Greene, they may anger some of their suburban voters in 2022 when there is another election and the Republicans are hoping to gain control of Congress. And on the other hand, if they don't uh, come out and say anything, then it would kind of seem like they're both uh, agreeing with her cuckoo comments and uh, moving towards a Republican Party that's, quote, uh, very loyal to Donald Trump. And this seems to be sort of the frightening aspect for a lot of people, and notably uh, in, in, in the Democratic Party as well, which they've really been hampering on this and playing on this and bringing Donald Trump continuously into this. And if they don't have that, and if they have a united Republican Party that's moved past Donald Trump, then it's the Democrats who will be in trouble. So it's um, it's it's actually to their benefit to go ahead and do this Marjorie Greene in the short, uh, to try to remove Marjorie Greene from her key positions in the short term. However, in the long term, it may provide to be very consequential because the Republicans then can start attacking the Democrats. I mean, Listen, Congress has already always been filled with oddballs uh, throughout the years, but for another party or for other representatives to remove a member that the American people have voted in uh, is only legal and possible if the person has uh, committed a, a criminal felony or treason. Uh, and let's not forget, you know, if, if the blame game is going around, the Republicans are talking about Ilhan Omar on the Democratic Party who made extremely offensive anti-Semitic uh, statements and uh, they were overlooked by the Democratic Party when she was elected. Maxine Waters in California has called for attacks and a creation of mobs against Trump voters if people see uh, Trump supporters or loyalists at gas stations and restaurants. So, you know, there's blame, there's plenty of blame to go around on both sides, but to take this drastic measure will sort of set a precedent that the Democratic Party, which are in the majority, are not really willing to play ball and unite uh, with the Republican Party as they claim they do. Right. Susan, just to unpack what you've said further, Representative Liz Cheney, who was among uh, one of the nine uh, House Republicans who voted for Trump's impeachment, now that's one thing, but the incendiary and violent past statements from the Congresswoman Green, you know, this will surely cause division among congressional Republicans. Absolutely. And Republicans all agree. I mean, that is one thing that they do agree on, that those comments were baseless, they were unfounded, and they shouldn't have been made. They were made prior to the time that she was serving uh, in Congress. And no one wants to defend Marjorie Greene on those aspects. That's for sure. But to set a precedent to remove an elected official that's been uh, that's been voted in by the people of her congressional district uh, is very unlikely to see that the Democrats will sort of say, okay, this one was removed, let's just move on and work together. It's just going to set a precedent, and I think that's mm -hmm. what the Republicans are concerned about. And, you know, for what it's worth, uh, Minority Leader McCarthy came out and said that she said as an elected official she should be more careful. But, you know, in the age of social media, it's, uh, it's very easy for the opposition party to take one person and pin that person as the character and policies of the entire party. And, and uh, that's what the Republicans and many are concerned is happening right now. Right. Susan, thanks very much for bringing us that report. We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.